YouTube, this is Daniel Vanover, and welcome back for another technology tip of the week. This week we're going to look at Google Sheets and how you can insert a chart, a pivot table, and a spark line into your Google Sheets. This really brings your spreadsheet to life by giving a graphical representation of the data in your spreadsheet. So let me share my screen with you and we'll get started with Google Sheets, charts, pivot tables, and spark lines. So I have a couple of Google Sheets here. Uh, one of them we'll be looking at for charts and spark lines, and the other we're going to look at for pivot tables. So let's start out with the spark lines and charts sheet that I have here. And we'll go ahead and we'll insert a chart into this Google Sheet. So the easiest way to do that is to just select the data that you want to graph. And go to Insert, Chart. And Google Sheets is fairly good to go ahead and pick a chart that it thinks that you're going to want to use. Uh, you may want to use a different type of chart, so you can go over here and you can change that uh, chart if you'd like. But Google Sheets does go ahead and select a chart that it thinks that you would want to use. So in order to uh, change anything about this chart, you'll see over here on the right the chart editor. So here you can choose what type of chart you want, if you want it to be a line chart and you've got uh, both the just standard lines and the filled in area chart as well as some bar graphs and then you have other charts at the bottom you do have some uh, line charts here you have a few column and bar graphs you have a pie chart scatter plots uh, maps and then any others such as candlestick charts and gauges and such so you just go through and you select whichever chart that you want to use you can also change some of the settings regarding this chart, such as if you want row one to be the headers. So if it's not picking up that row one is the headers, you may need to check that. You can also choose whether or not you want the labels at the bottom or on the x-axis to show up by clicking on use column A as labels, uncheck that, and the labels go away. Some of the other ways you can customize this chart are by clicking on customize, and you can change the chart style such as the color the font you can change the titles if you want it to be something different such as products you can change that font type and font size whether or not you want the legend to show up the vertical axis the horizontal axis and if you'd like grid lines as well if you need to change the data range on this chart you can do so by clicking on the data tab again and choosing data range and here you can either type in or you can select a data range by clicking on the select data range button and all you do is you just select the data range that you want it to go through and click OK. You could do multiple data ranges as well. So that's a chart. Now let's look at a spark line. A spark line is essentially a small chart inside of a cell and you do that by actually typing in a formula. So the formula is equal spark line. And like with any formula, you do need a parenthesis and you select the data that you want to use. So a spark line is really for a single column or a single row of data. So I just selected the data. You can also type that in B2 colon B21 and close it off with a parenthesis, hit enter. And now you have a spark line of just that data. So just product one sales data here will be inside that cell, and you'll see a small chart. You can copy and paste, or you can use the little square and drag across if you want, or you just type it in again, and it will generate a spark line for each of those columns. Another type of spark line that you may want to use is a column. So you just type in equals spark line. Give it its data, so we'll do these four cells, do a comma, and then if you use the bracket and you say chart type column, close the bracket off, Close the parenthesis off, and now you see it's kind of a column type, small graph inside the cell. Again, you could retype that if you want to in each one, copy and paste it, or just drag using the little square, and that copies everything down below. 
So now you see all of the bars for each of these products. So the 2, the 30, the 60, and the 28 there, the 5, the 22, the 110, and the 83. This is a really neat little trick for creating data charts inside of a cell. The last thing I want to show you is pivot tables. So pivot tables are essentially an aggregation of data into another tab on a Google Sheet. To create a pivot table, all I need to do is select the data that I want to use for my pivot table. So for instance, with this one, I want to see the number of times that a particular favorite color has been selected. So I just select all of my data I go up here to data and I choose pivot table and it will generate a new tab at the bottom. It says pivot table three. It will tell you on the right the different, it will tell you on the right where this pivot table data is coming from. This one's coming from sheet one and cells A1 to C20. You can type in whatever you would like for those cells to be if you want to change the data or if you'd like to just select the data range, you can do that. You can click on select data range you can switch between tabs at the bottom, so you just click on the other tab and you choose the data range that you want it to use. If you don't want it to go for A1, you can choose B1 to C20. And then it's asking you, okay, what are your rows and what are your columns? So the easiest way to create a quick pivot table of data is to just put it in rows. So I click on add and I'm going to say, okay, I want my rows to be the favorite color. You can choose whether or not you want it to show the totals or not. I really don't care about the totals uh, for all of the sets, but you can if you like. So you can uncheck that or check that. We don't want to add anything into columns, but we do want something in values. So we're going to click on values. We're going to add favorite color to values, and it's going to automatically select count A, which is count the number of times that particular word, phrase, or number has been stated. You can choose whether or not you want to be an average, a min, max, a sum, whatever, but a lot of times you will want count A because that counts the number of times that that phrase repeats itself. You can drag this out a little bit so you can see what it says, but it does say count A, a favorite color, and we can see that blue got selected four times, brown was selected once, green was selected two times. This is really nice to be able to aggregate that data in. So if I wanted to add a column to this, adding a column for age is going to create a column for each age that was stated in the data set. And tell me the number of times that each age group selected that favorite color. So click on age and it's going to tell me, okay, the number of six-year-olds that said they like blue is one. The number of eight-year-olds that said they like blue is three. That's how I got my four. So that is another way that you can go in and set up a data set that is a row and column as well to see an actual breakdown of the data. And that's how you insert a chart, a pivot table, and a sparkline into your Google Sheets. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get updated on new videos as I post them. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Again, this is Daniel Vanover with your Technology Tip of the Week inserting charts, pivot tables, and spark lines into your Google Sheets. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.